Greetings, everyone. This is BJ Black from No Export for You, and welcome to part 126 of my Let's Play of Ahama Yui Castle Meister. So, let's go and have sex with Mikshana. So, once again, we're going to head off to a, a place well separated from the hustle and bustle of the main courtyard. No, so, Mikshuan has called us out here. This is unusual. So, did something happen? What's up? Hi, Abaro. Yes, well, she has something to discuss with you, Avaro. Discuss. What is this, in order to make more friends again? So, no, it's not that. This is with regard to people she's already made friends with that she wants to get one step further with. Hmm. More than friends, huh? So when she thinks about it, when she interacts with Avaro, she engages without ornamentation. Uh, yeah. It's true that, that Avaro notices she treats him differently than other people. So, perhaps she was... She was being spoiled by him, if only unconsciously. So even when she didn't consider, didn't give much consideration to him, and badmouthed him, Avaro would just keep accepting her as she was. That's called being a doormat, Mikshu, Anna. Hmm. So you're saying I was spoiling you? Uh, it's an honor. So even Mikshuano, when she was had her bad attitude towards him, he always was forthright in his. Well, on his part. Hmm. Is that how you see it? So, she wants to hear Avaro's feelings. I don't know why. So, what does he think of her? And why is she he so kind to her? Bleh. This isn't even realistic. So, she's a little uneasy. But seeing as she's serious and everything, we can't exactly joke around with her. Avaro, I don't remember the last time you told a joke. Oh, no, wait. You told a joke to... It was Rosaline. We were trying to entertain Rosaline. And you told the worst joke imaginable. But anyway. Avaro says he's going to be serious. Like he's always serious. Well, Avaro thinks that although she's kind of plain in a way, she's cute. And that's why he's nice to her. Huh. The way she fights is cool and all. And the way she's a responsible leader is pretty and all. But Avaro basically thinks of her as cute. It, it might be because of her mission that she's getting along, that she, she's fighting alongside us and protecting the castle. But, be that as it may, you're one of our irreplaceable allies here. So, if it were possible, Avara would also like to get along better with you. Haha. -ha. 
If telling you this doesn't trouble you. This is so corny. Anyway, she says that I've always fine like that. Mikshana. So she seems a bit pained and is pressing on her chest. Hmm. So, what's this? So, hearing Avaro talk, her heartbeat gets violent and her, her body gets hot. That's the fight or flight response. It means you want to kill him for being such a loser. <sighs> but anyway, she wants to hear more from him. So she's gazing at him all hot like. Okay, Avaro. Since Mikirana here came to the castle, you are the first one that she treated intimately. And with his help, she was able to get closer to other people like she wanted to. Actually, he didn't help. It was Fia. Do you remember that? Christ. Hmm. Alvaro says that he didn't do anything special. It was all Mikshuana and her courage to get it done. Well, the one who gave him, the one who gave her the opportunities and, well, research hints, shall we call them, was Avaro. And for that reason, she's grateful to him and wants to get along better with him. Gag me. So she's a bit embarrassed at saying that and fidgets as she says it. So, she'd like to bridge the distance between he and her. Him and her. Man, that was bad. He and her, that's awful. Hmm, so, is it alright for Avaro to take that at face value? She nods, keeps fidgeting. So, the Goddess of Connections and her Apostle, well, yeah, they say the Apostle of the, Avaro as the Apostle of the Goddess of Connections, if he is approached in this way, it would get through to him. That's what Fia herself said to her. So, in order to get along better with him, this was the number one method. Is what she said to her. Hmm, Fia did, huh? Avaro feels on one side that Mikshuan has kind of been fooled here. But he can't bring her, himself to say it. Hm. But Avaro, for his part, does want to get along better with Mikshuana. All right then. How about we give it a shot? Yes. Yes. By wrapping around each other, 
we could get to understanding the real meaning of each other, she thinks. So, how are we going to do this? If you could, please inform her. So, you've never done this? No experience at all? None. As it is, outside of her missions, she hasn't really got a lot of deep connections with people at all. Okay then, leave everything to me. So, he lays hands upon her and pushes her over. Yep, that just happened. So Mikshuan is saying, perhaps to herself, that she's so happy that in her mission here she was able to do, well, get so close to somebody like this. But, this is also very troubling to her. So, getting close to everyone, she has come to love them too much. She is the monastery of the church's subjugating flames, Mikshuana. What she should prioritize more than anything else is her mission. Oh, give me a break. Don't give me one of these love versus duty conflicts. Those are so lame. Anyway, we have time for another scene. So, in the battle, it says, we talked with Kudvans and got some new information. So, we're calling everybody together to convey it properly. Although, honestly, they should have been there. At least some of them. <laughs> anyway, first it was the plans of Kudvans after the Holy Accords and her change, his change in attitude towards Fia. How he caught us in a trap and started a fight with the castle. The reason he did that and his, you know, attitude as the high priest of the Fuchsia faith. But more than anything else, the most important would be the Fuchsia God thing. All right. The god called Fiusia doesn't exist. We heard this from the high priest's mouth. Well, pretty directly, in fact. <laughs> Fiusia-sama is a fictional existence. <laughs> So, that's pretty well unbelievable. Does he really not even exist? How absolutely surprising. Heel, are you really surprised? Your voice is the same as it always is. Hmm. Rosaline is rendered speechless, I suppose. Hey, Rosaline. What's up? You're all stiffed up. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Katarito, you're too cute. Oh, her too. Well, since Katarito was one of the dragon tribes, hell, 
the chief of the dragon tribes. I all thought that maybe she knew beforehand, but it appears within the Fuchsia faith this knowledge was kept extremely limited. So, naturally, to anybody who was raised under the Fuchsia faith, this will be a pretty big shock. Although at least two of those guys are nominally another faith. And, on the other hand, the ones that weren't raised around here, they are surprised a bit, but they're still a bit level-headed about it. This is Kissinger telling us that before we had to talk with her regarding Fuchsia being a male god who appeared in the history of the country. But going by what the high priest said, he didn't actually exist and in fact only in those documents and oral traditions did he ever exist. Yeah, it seems like the faith that they were able to gather went to some other god. Yeah, Kudvan said they made use of this fictional god in order to pour faith into our god, whom he didn't ex actually identify. Hmm, I see. A god, a lie of the... a false god. So, this only further proves that we need to do some investigations. So, the necessity of entering into the Holy Grounds has grown. Certainly once we go there, we'll learn the whole truth. Well, as Meek Shoana says, for various reasons, we do need to go to the God's Haze. And with that, the ice will be unfrozen, let's say. So, although there are a lot of complicated feelings on this issue, there's nothing to do but move forward. Well, at a time like this, this may be a bit unfair, but I'm going to continue on with our lifestyle, which was based not on this other god, but upon fear. So, he'd also like everybody to oh, confirm themselves in that course of action as well. So up to now, Fe the uh, god Fuchsia was going to be a big was going to be a big wall that we they were facing, and now this off limits area that the god had declared. Well, we didn't exactly get permission, but if there isn't a Fuchsia. He can't exactly complain. And furthermore, the, the ones among us that were raised in Infidus and, the, and thereabouts may have been feeling guilty up to this point, but now... So, that's right. Misrepresenting a god is simply unforgivable. Seriously, seriously. Hmm, isn't it? 
Well, Larisha's all clenching her fists in anger. Go, oh, she's... <laughs> she's shaking with a fury that is like flames. <laughs> and everything that was decided at the Holy Accords was based upon, well, the existence of Fiusia. If that's not true, then we have no duty to obey the conclusion. So, to lie about the existence of a god made fools of all the believers. So, we don't need to hold back at all from now on. Well, Rishu is really going off, but Fia, as a god, has her own opinion to put in here. Oh, but even if he wasn't there, the people, by believing in Fuchsia, it would, you know, fill their hearts properly. Don't you think? So, Fuchsia, even if he was only a name, was able for his part to help everybody. So, if you can, try not to hate them. <laughs> so, Fia, as expected, you have a such large capacity. So, she assents to this. She will calm her anger and proceed with the level spirit and act properly. That was easy. Hmm, so that's right. To begin with, we were set on doing what we were proceeding to do, even if Fuchsia Faith had set it a uh, had set it up as forbidden. So if the existence wasn't true, it means that our actions and direction is pretty much unchanged. Ah, so Rosaline is back with us. So, the Fuchsia Faith has lost its uh, centerpiece now. So, in order to fulfill our goals, let's continue. So up to now, there's one character who hasn't said anything, and she's been kind of thinking something over. But she nervously says, uh, So, Avaro. Okay, what is it? Uh, so, your grandfather, the high priest, in the end, didn't actually give us permission to enter, did he? Which means that the barrier around the God's Haze is going to continue to be there like it is, right? Yep. Yeah. As you can see, it's still being surrounded by those typhoons or whatever. So even if we sit here and wait for it, that's not going to dissipate. So she takes the 
swallow and looks at the god's haze. So, pretty soon, here in the castle, we're going to enter into that. Well, you don't need to worry. This barrier is set up by the elves. Up until now, nobody has ever broken it, but... On our side, we have someone of our own, specifically, who draws from the blood of the elves himself, so we'll be alright. Yeah, that's true. The barrier techniques should respond to his blood that he got from his mother and all. So, we should be able to get through. We won't lose to the winds and Gualacuna Castle will get through. So everybody seems to be powerfully on. Uh, there seems to be a powerful consensus behind this. <clears throat> so, we're going to break through that barrier. And to the castle, we're going to make some strengthenings first. So, to that purpose, as much as possible, we need to gather materials and make equipment and make sure that we can get through no matter what happens. Alright then, so we're going to head towards the God's Haze. Which means that I can't actually go there yet. Yes, I have to do some unspecified number of other things first. This is a scene I'm going to skip for now, but it's not very important. Now, I do want to show you some... You can see in the character blocks what faith each character has. If I were here... The Lord of the Castle. How nice. Fia herself. Most of them Fiusia. Kisnir being foreign. Tomaya. Oh man, that's awful. That's the opposite of Yamato. But Dethelm, for one, is actually faithful towards the craft god, Garbel. And who else was it? Yes. Rosaline is... I don't even know who that is. An illusion demon lord? Rishuna? Oh man. Uh, naturally, Mikshuana follows Masteria. But anyway, Dethelm and Rosaline shouldn't have been so struck since it wasn't exactly a god they followed. Also, where is she? I forgot to show the boss of this last place. This is horrible. Hmm, how nice. I want to point out that she's actually supposed to appear in another stage that I don't know about yet. So maybe we'll be seeing her again. That'd be interesting. And... Coup de Vance. Isn't he imposing? Alright. Enough looking at the information. I'm going to watch that scene next time, and then after that, it's time to fulfill objectives before going to the God's Haze. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.